All right, today we're going to do the 2C video, which is going to cover units of measurement. Um, and here we have a picture of how we sometimes feel when we're measuring in science. Now, the first thing that we have to do is to talk about making observations. And we've done observations in lab, but they typically fall into two categories, which we have not necessarily done before. The first is quantitative, and if you look at the beginning, quantity is usually refers to numbers. So if it's a quantitative observation, this is something that involves numbers. So for example, you know, when we were massing spaghetti, you may have had a piece of spaghetti that was 0 .970 grams. Okay, this would be an example of a quantitative um, observation. Qualitative is what we've primarily done so far. This is descriptive, usually words. Okay, this would be, you know, when you're describing magnesium, that you would have a silver flat solid. Okay, so if there's a number in it, it's a quantitative observation. If not, it's descriptive and it's qualitative. Now with measurement, this is usually quantitative information, hence the reason that there's a quantity being described. Um, again, my highlighter isn't working, so any time that I, you know, circle a word or underline it, you can also highlight it. Um, whichever way you would like to do that. And again, remember if I'm writing something down, then you should be writing something down. That's kind of the general rule. Usually with measurement, you need a number and a unit. Uh, there are a few exceptions throughout the year that you won't need a unit, but for the most time, you do. For example, 7.5 centimeters. I know this should seem pretty obvious, but 7.5 is the number. Centimeters is the unit. Um, and then length is the quantity that we're measuring. Okay, so it's just another way of being being specific on those. And units compare what is being measured to a defined measurement standard. For example, a centimeter, you know, we know what a centimeter is, but there is a standard centimeter that's been established so that when you have a ruler that measures centimeters, they're always the same distance. Okay, now for SI, the, the Système International, I don't speak French, so I don't say that very, war very well, but its system of measurement agreed on all over the world in 1960, except the United States is kind of a holdout on this. Um, units are defined in terms of, again, standards of measurement, and this is also what we usually would refer to primarily as the metric system. Not everything, but you're going to see. And if you've traveled to other countries, if you've gone to Canada or Europe um, or a lot of other places, they use the metric system pretty much everywhere else. Now, some important SI base units for you to know. Um, for example, if we're measuring length, okay, um, we're going to use meter. Okay, so here's that metric system that I was telling about. Mass, we're going to use kilograms or grams. Times, we usually use seconds. Temperature, we use what's called Kelvin, uh, which is capital K not Celsius or Fahrenheit. The reason we use Kelvin is that there are no negative numbers. So that's why that one is positive is a good thing and you'll see that later. And the amount is what's called N, which is what's called the mole. We'll come back to this um, a little bit later. You don't necessarily have to memorize this chart. Uh, do not memorize, but it's more that you know these are just the units that we're dealing with. Okay? Oops, that's really important. There we go. Alright, so mass is a measure of the quantity of matter and its standard SI unit is kilogram. I'm not going to ask you that. We'll use gram a lot too, but we do still need to know that mass is matter. We, we use gram. Now with mass versus weight, um, here's a new vocab word right here. Weight is the measure of gravitational pull on matter. Alright, this is another example of where we have words that, you know, in, in our culture, in our society, we usually use mass and weight interchangeably but they're actually different. Um, mat weight is gravitational pull, mass is not. Mass is simply the amount of matter. Mass does not depend on gravity. So one of the best ways I know how to explain that is if you went to a new planet or somewhere else in the solar system, your mass would stay the same, but your weight could change depending on the gravity. Okay, And not that this is practical, but it kind of helps us understand why. So for example, this is just a picture. Here, this is us here on Earth. Let's say we had a person who weighed about 140 pounds, and since we don't think in pounds, or we, we do think in pounds, that would be about 63.5 kilograms. If you went to the moon, notice there's a little bit of a less arrow. That's telling you that there is less gravity on the moon. So that person, now mass 
in theory, all the atoms should go with them, so there still would be 63.5 kilograms of matter on the moon for this person, but they would only feel like they weigh 23 pounds. And so that's why they have moon boots when you go to the, when you go to the moon, so that they have the, they're very heavy and they keep them attached to the moon so that they don't float away. Um, now, Jupiter has a lot a lot more gravity so that same person that weighed or had a mass of 63.5 kilograms would feel like they weighed 355 pounds and then the person if you went got all the way to the sun which we wouldn't make it for other reasons but um, the mass is 63.5 kilograms and they would feel like they weighed 39.14 pounds so mass stays the same weight can change and that's really the biggest difference because weight is gravitational pull. Now length, um, we SI unit is meter, we we'll use a lot of centimeter and kilometer as well and that's just how um, where we get to on these things. Now then we have what are called derived SI units. Derived SI units come from combining different base units either by multiplication or division. For example, area is something we've all found. It's length times width. So for example, if you had a square that was 8 centimeters by 7 centimeters, the total area, you multiply those numbers, you also have to multiply the units. So we get 56 centimeters squared because you had to multiply those units. And this we'll, we'll do some of this and it'll come into play. But um, this is just showing you where you have 8 centimeters by 7 centimeters, 56 excuse me, centimeters squared. Now volume we've already talked about is the amount of space an object takes up and typically if it's an SI unit you need to multiply the length times the width times the height. So if it's SI unit it would be meter times meter times meter or meter cubed. We use, we'll use centimeters cubed in the lab a lot too and we'll talk about the difference. And this is something you just need to know. Now not right this very second but highlight this because in the next week or so I'm going to say, remember in that volume slide where it said need to know? Um, for conversion factors, which is what we're going to do a lot in class the next time, one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter. So you just need to keep that in your memory banks, and I'll keep reminding you. But also, we're going to get into some of these in class, but there's a thousand milliliters in a liter as well. Now, density is another one. Um, density is a ratio of mass to volume. So, hence the equation, density equals mass per unit volume. Um, in other words, how much stuff is packed into an amount of space. Our SI unit whoop, is kilograms per meters cubed, but really you can have any mass unit over any volume unit. Okay, it doesn't matter. And as a reminder, density is also an intensive property. So it does not depend on how much is present. Again, if you think about water, it doesn't matter if there's 8 gallons or 52 gallons. The um, density is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so let's do an example here. Um, we've got a sample of aluminum metal. has a mass of 8.4 grams. The volume is 3.1 centimeters cubed. Find the density. All right, so we may or may not remember from the last section that the first thing that we do when we solve math problems is that we have to list out the known and the unknown. So first off, my mass, and remember you have to tell me what it is, you can't just write down the numbers. So the mass is 8.4 grams. Volume is 3.1 centimeters cubed, and the unknown is going to be to find the density. Now when you take the time to set this problem up, some people really struggle with reading math problems but if you take the time to set this up, it's going to make doing the problem that much easier. Now, step two is that you have to write out the equation. And these steps aren't going away, so you might as well just get used to them. Um, density equals mass per volume. All right, then we're going to have uh, the work and our answer. So we go ahead and we plug in our work. I'm going to go ahead and put the units in there to show you where they come from, 8.4 grams. 3.1 centimeters cubed. Then we're going to do this on our calculator. So if we take 8.4 and we divide it by 3.1, we get a lot of numbers. So we got to think about significant figures here for a second. And if you look up here, both of these numbers only have two sig figs. So all I can write down 
is two sig figs. That's it. And if you look on your calculator, you get 2.709. These are the first few numbers. We can only write down the first two. The zero is less than five, so we don't round. So my final answer for density is going to be 2.7. My unit is grams per centimeters cubed. And that just the reason I put these number these letters here is so that you can see where that came from. It's just grams over centimeters cubed. And that's how you find density. Now we'll do problems where you have to solve for volume and you have to solve for mass. Um, and that's just it's it's a lesson in algebra. So again, part of the reason I let you show me the known and the unknown, show me the equations, show me the work, and then get also get points for the right number of sig figs in your answer is if you mess the algebra up, it's not going to cost you all that much on a point on a, on a um, question. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, we're actually going to do this one in class, but we're going to talk about um, prefixes. Prefixes are added to base units to represent quantities that are smaller or larger. And some of these are familiar. You've got kilo, you've got centi, milli, micro. There will be a list that we have to memorize and um, we're gonna, I'm going to give you another list in class. And mega is also bigger. But we'll talk about how we set up conversion factors. Um, conversion factors are a ratio that come from a statement of equality between two different units. Every conversion factor is equal to one. So for example, if you have four quarters are equal to a dollar, there's two ways you can write that. Um, you can write it as four quarters over one dollar. Actually, is it going to pop up there? Yeah, this is what I'm writing right here as a conversion factor. Or one dollar over four quarters. Um, and we're going to set up a lot of these conversion factors. We're going to do a lot of problems of how to show you how to properly convert from one to the other. Um, you know, for example, even though we know how to do this, let's say I was starting with six quarters and I wanted to know how many dollars. Well, since I want to go two dollars, I'm going to pick this version over here. And just to show you the way that we set these up, I usually use boxes. It's the same as putting like a multiplying by a fraction, but it would be one dollar over four quarters. Now, simple math, six times one because it's on the top. And then you take six divided by four. I can only have one significant figure. Oh, I'm going to throw you off with that. Um, but that's how we set the math up. So our calculator would give us 1.5. I'd have to round it to 2 because of significant figures. But that's the setup of it. Like I said, we'll do lots of problems like this in class. So um, <clears throat> don't worry if that didn't you know, make a lot of sense. Biggest thing with guidelines with conversions, you still have to set out and write out what no one wants to know. No one unknown and unknown. You'll have to cancel your units as you go and make sure you have sig figs. Okay, so we'll do lots of problems in class.